music is fire. All right, all right, okay, okay. All right, y'all can be seated. High five, actually high five somebody next to you and be seated. And then look at your second choice and say, it looks like you dressed up today. I'm glad you dressed up. Now, 8.30 feels good in they the They dress room. up always. They know how to get out of bed early. They know how to these look are the, these are the seasons. fresh, bright and early. Love it. Love it. Today's going to be amazing. We're so fired up that you guys are hanging out with us. Um, I, we were trying to do seating arrangements because I have hair envy. And it's time I sit near you. Yours is just upside down. Yes. <laughs> We were, we were on, a, on a, our trip this summer, and this, this older gentleman walked by. He said, man, it's like God was trying to teach you a lesson. He just shoved all your hair through you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's unbelievable, sir. I'm not even mad at you. That was amazing. That is incredible. So the Nefsteds have an incredible, um, incredible wisdom to share with us today because as you all know, we've been talking about how to maintain and sustain healthy relationships. And we have walked through some of the different ways to do that. But one key part that we have not shared about yet is the gift of communication. Oh, so good. And these two are gifted, skilled, and quite wise in some ways of communication that we're excited for them to share with us it's today. It's so good. And I know we've talked a little bit about it. Um, when you and I were talking, for those of you who don't know, Pastor Sean wrote a really famous song a long time ago called I Can Only Imagine. Um, that's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> we were talking about communication. At the whole morning this morning, we were getting ready. I kept singing, can we talk yeah, yeah. for a minute? Hey. Girl, I want to know. That's pretty good. Can we talk? Y'all, this is church. We're sanctified. Off. We're not going to be singing that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking about communication today. So we're going to ask you all some questions, kind of interview style. Y'all are a power couple. You have four amazing daughters, and you allowed uh, you know, somebody to marry one of them, which we can talk about a little bit <laughs> as well, uh, which I'm not prepared mentally to be okay with our daughters getting married. But first question, uh, we're just going to jump right in. First question is, tell us a little bit about your story and how communication has impacted your relationship. Well, it's an honor to be here, and it's always better uh, to be here with my wife, and you guys are such incredible leaders. Can you clap your hands for your pastors? And it's very apparent God's hand is on you and this church, and we're just very honored to be here. We don't take that lightly. Um, it was crazy how we met. You know, it was, it was raining. Um, a taxi cab pulled up. We both reached for the handle at the same time. This is you and me or you two? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure this out. No, we, we met in church. I don't church. remember that at all. <laughs> we met in church. I went off to Bible college, had a long distance relationship. Um, and uh, long distance back then was a pay phone, ladies and gentlemen. There was no cell phone. I know. And you got, a, way back. you got an 800, 800 number, number just for oh, me yeah. to call. Yes. Yes. It felt strange. Yes. But all in card? It's kind oh, of, well, she got her own 800 number, so I didn't have to, you know, the, the dorm at the Bible college was quarters only, yeah. and there's always jokers on there talking to their girlfriends. So I was like, man, phone check, homie. And, and um, so anyway, she got a phone number just so, so we don't have to pay with quarters, which is amazing. Amazing. And um, by the way, a pay phone is where you put money in. To, Help them out. Yeah. It's important. It's so cord. we met, we got married, and I was 21, and she was... 25. Yeah, I'm not a cougar. I'm more like a puma. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we get married, and our first year of marriage, and I, you know, whenever you see couples up here talking about marriage, it's, it's, it's a little um, interesting because we can't act like we're the experts on the matter. We can speak from experience and tell you some places that you, know, you might want to watch out for because our first year of marriage was H-E double hockey sticks. And very, very rough. Because we just come from two different backgrounds, two different walks of life. And two different cultures as well. And two different cultures. Yes. And she's a Christian and like a real one, you know? And I'm just, I'm barely made it in. And... Um, the Bible talks about two becoming one, and we always think like it's two people running through the lilies, like, ah, it's like two Mack trucks 
coming at 70 miles an hour with all of your baggage and your luggage. And, and everything looks good at first, but then you realize we, ha- we have very different personality types, very different. Um, the Bible, uh, the, a lot of people say opposites attract. Well, before opposites attract, and then after marriage, opposites attack. <laughs> That's what happens. That's hilarious. And here's how many, how many of you are morning people? Raise your hand. Morning people? All right. Night people. Night people? Okay. Raise your hand if you married somebody who's your opposite. Yeah. Diana, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a morning person, so I go to bed at 930. Nine, like, what's there to do after 930? So much. And she wants, so she, we get married, and she's like, we're going to stay up and talk all night. I would fall asleep. Yeah. I, and it's 9.30, <clears throat> and she's, I wake up multiple times, she's weeping, like, you don't love me, you don't want to talk to me. You don't understand me, yeah. yes. So, I, I mean, this goes on for weeks. So one day I wake her up at five o'clock in the morning, I said, I want to talk, I want to talk. <laughs> so now we talk at noon. <laughs> we talk at noon. But here's the truth. Um, you guys have ants here in Texas, like fire ants that are on steroids. Yeah, real deal. But... Here, here's what you do. There's two types of people when it comes to ants coming in your house, all right? Number one, there's the attacker. You attack immediately with raid. You're spraying Lysol. Anything you can find. Yeah, anything. Um, and then there's the one who just thinks, man, I'm just going to let them take what they want. Hopefully they leave. <laughs> there's, there's the one who attacks and the one who avoids. And usually these people get married. Oh, that's good. Write that down, actually. Write that down. One who attacks, one who avoids. So some of you are the avoider. Mm -hmm. Some of you are the attacker. You want to deal with it all right now. Yes. That was her. I would be the avoider. on the table, yes. You want to talk about that? (laughs) I just want to avoid it right now. (laughs) (laughs) I think for many of us, and you know, myself including, I came from a culture that's very, and and a lot of kids in, in my family, like there's nine kids and you have to fight for your right to say something, fight for your portion, fight for your place in, in the family. And so for me coming into the marriage, I was the spicy Latina, you know, Nicaraguense through and through, Central American, orale. Okay, so, so when I came into the marriage, it was, you know, quiet at first, love God, submit to your husband, all right, okay. I'll yield a little bit. And as soon as we got married, it was door slamming. It was, oh, frustration. And I wanted to deal with it that evening. And he was the avoider. He would get silent, look at me, walk away. And that just got under my skin. How many of you are like that? It just, it, just don't go silent on me. Just don't go dark. And so um, for me, it was that demonstrative, you know, um, yelling, screaming, slamming doors and all of that. Um, because that's the way you express your frustration and anger. Our family's just loud all the time. Yeah, we're, we're, They're just, they'll we're be at the dinner Italians, table screaming. Let me tell you, yes. Pass the, pass the food. I'm like, whoa, back up. Why are you angry all the time? We're not mad at each other. We're just loud, you right. know? I'm like, I'm Caucasian. We don't... <laughs> I'm kidding. My dad was a yeller, and, and, and so her family was a yeller, and I, I couldn't take it emotionally. So I honestly said, babe, we're grown-ups. Let's, we can just talk like this. And that made her more mad. But yeah. you don't want to be George Costanza's parents on Seinfeld. You know, that's not the goal, just yelling all the time. Yelling all the time, yeah. But then you realize that the, the way that you communicate affects everything. The three main things that make or break a marriage, and that's communication, intimacy, and money. And, it, and by far, the most important is communication, because you don't want to be intimate with somebody that you have walls up with. Right. And your, the money's going to get funny real quick if there's not communication. Right. And so we begin to try to figure out what communication looks like for us. And, and many of you don't have good models. And so we get, our, we get our model ship from TV and movies or our parents. And many times that's not healthy. Right. And there, it's frustrating because there's no class in high school on communication or relationships it's, and money. You know, there's none of this. And we all have it. So we're, all kind, we're kind of winging it. You get married and you wing it. And so our first year was very, very difficult. And... Um, you know, you have a lot of game at first, guys, when you're trying to get your wife. I mean, you got, you got game. <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then something changes, you know. Beforehand, here's when we would date. I would I'd take her out to dinner. I'd be like, girl, get whatever you want. Steak, lobster, I got you. 
Okay, like literally. And then three years in, you're starting to find yourself frustrated. Like seriously, $8 for a lemonade? Can you not just order lemons? We got water and sugar on the table. This is ridiculous. $8. Like guys, come on. You used to be Mr. Casanova. Now you're just Mr. Sit on the sofa. <laughs> Nobody's lifting their hands. They're yeah. like, $8 is ridiculous for a lemonade. <laughs> You end up, you, you, you stop investing in your, your spouse once you are married. That's really good. And that's so dangerous because you're going to get out of your relationship what you put in. That's a good word. Oh, that's so good. Can you say that again? There's a danger in that. I hope everybody hears that, is that the, the tendency is to stop. You say it again. How do you know if stop I remember? Did any of y'all get it? We're going to get out. Stop investing in your spouse. Yeah, the moment you stop investing in your spouse is, if you want a good return, you have to invest. Yep. You business people understand that. Like, so who, who did not invest in Google? You've never invested in Google? Raise your hand, Ray. Guess what? You didn't get anything from Google. Right. And many, it, would be as, it would be as crazy for you to approach a stock market and be like, I haven't gotten any dividends. I haven't, my stock hasn't oh, risen good. at all from Google. Well, you never bought Google. Yeah. Why would you expect a you return? Goggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, James chapter one, verse nine. Let's throw some scripture at this, all right? Um, the Bible says, know this, my beloved brothers. Let everybody, every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, speak mm -hmm. and slow to anger. Oh, don't elbow somebody. But scripture is replete with the subject of communication, how to do it effectively. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, Ephesians 4.29 says, but only such as is good for building others up. That means if you don't have something good to say, don't say it. Force yourself to. That's what we've heard all our lives. If you don't have something good to say, then don't say anything at all. But you can say a lot without saying something. I, I, I ain't gonna say nothing. You just said a lot. Right, that's true. You, if you can't force yourself, if you can't find something to, to say something kind about, force yourself, dig deep. Like you can find something to encourage and build up and lift up that it may give grace to the one who hears it. Many of us struggle with communication and our first year was really rough. If I can be a little vulnerable, all right? <clears throat> um, I hate talking about it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, I wasn't a great husband the first year. And um, so I had a very different view of how we should live together. We get married. I'm in ministry. I'm a youth pastor at the time. Uh, she's worship, worship leader. And, 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 and we, we know how to do ministry, but this isn't working at home. So she would cry, and I just wouldn't understand. She would get mad. I wouldn't understand. I just would, I had a cold, a cold heart, I guess. Well, there's an old encourager named Zig Ziglar who I was listening to some sales tapes, like he has some great leadership lessons, and he says, the amount of energy you spend in outside relationships, you should spend that and more for your spouse. And I had to pull over. I lived in Texas at the time. And we were about to help somebody start a church, but I was working a sales job. And I remember it took me back, the Holy Spirit took me back to a moment where I literally was sick with the flu in the summertime. So it's hot, it's 149 degrees. And I have my suit on. I'm literally gagging in the parking lot because I'm, I'm about to, I'm dry heaving. I, I have the flu, I'm getting sick, but I cinch my tie up because I got to close the deal today. It has to be today to get this commission check. I walk in, I put the face on. How you doing, Sean Nepstead? And I, just, I close the deal and I get that commission check. And I, to this day, I don't even remember what I spent it on. And the Holy Spirit said, you're going to invest all that time and energy into a relationship like that for some measly commission check. And then you go home after your wife's been with the four girls under the age of two all day, four in diapers, and be like, what's for dinner? It's interesting because we will talk to other people, but we would never talk to them the way we talk to our spouse. So one day, and this is where it's hard. <clears throat> She didn't cry all the time. I don't want to make her out to see, seem like that, but she was crying one day and she just looked at me and she said, Sean, there's no honor. 
That'll hit you. Because she was right. I, 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 I never, I, never I, wasn't, I wasn't communicating to listen. I was communicating to be right. Communication is not mutual talking. It's mutual understanding. Communication is not mutual talking. It's mutual understanding. And you can jump in any t- anytime you want, babe. But for, for us, there was even a moment where we were, we were having, a, we don't yell, but we will have some intense fellowship. <laughs> we, were, we were having some intense fellowship and, and um, we were going, I mean, it was, I don't even remember what it was about. Do you remember? Yeah. I, but don't I, tell them. I, okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I don't. <laughs> You don't remember, right? No. <clears throat> All right, so we're arguing. Yeah. And it's back and forth. It's back, it's a pickleball match. Just back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And then I stop. The Holy Spirit just, he's like, what are you doing? And I stop. I, the way I did it, it almost sounded sarcastic at first, so I had to over-explain. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. <sighs> Pause. I haven't been trying to listen. I've just been trying to get my point across. Could, could you start, let's start from the top again. And I said, I'm not saying this to be sarcastic. Could you start from the top again? I'm not going to say anything. I just want to try to hear where you're coming from. Do you know what that did to the whole situation? Most of you, most of us were fighting to be right. We're fighting to be hurt. Can I talk? Can I talk? Can I say something? Like, you're not even thinking about trying to understand. You're just waiting for, like double dutch, waiting for a moment to jump in and attack again. And then even if you win the argument, many times we take those of you that are better with your words in in the relationship, you take their silence as agreement. Just because you beat the argument doesn't mean that you won. You want to jump in on that? Yeah, I think um, like many of you, um, I'm sure this story resonates with you. We've always um, heard the Christian romance, you know, the Christian ideal of what a family looks like. We can behave um, behind closed doors ruthlessly and, and ferociously with our, with our loved ones. But out in the world, we give this illusion like everything, we have it together as a couple, and that is not true. And so that's, that was my experience as a kid, as a daughter in a family that l- wanted to love God, but there were things at home that just didn't line up with the Word of God. Does that resonate with uh, many of you? And so um, when I got married, to try to emulate what I saw at home, I, we realized you know, that there are things in our world that just weren't congruent. They weren't re- running in parallel lines. And... Um, we just determined for ourselves that we weren't going to be crazy. <laughs> we weren't going to speak at a certain level. We weren't going to um, use generalities when we're expressing our frustration with what each other. What do you other. mean by that? Maybe explain. Like, you're always. Or you never. You never. All those blanket statements. You yes. blanket every yeah. scenario. Yes. And one that, word. Exactly. And you do such a disservice for your spouse when you um, use those triggering words or the words that amplify a whole lot when you're trying to diffuse an argument. And so for us, we just determined, even with raising our family, that we weren't going to repeat patterns that we saw in, um, in our own, uh, how would you say it, in our immediate family. In our experience, yeah. Yeah, in our experience. So he had a, a, a raging father. I had a raging mom. My mom would settle an argument with a knife pulled out. Yeah. I never did that to my husband. I, uh, let, let me put it this way. It sounds humorous at first, but it becomes traumatizing as a young girl when you're running to the bathroom trying to escape your mother. Yeah. Yeah. You, you says, understand, you know, like the, those levels of where you can get to a certain level and then show up to church and be like, all is great. Mm. No, all is not great. I remember r- trying to run away and the people at church told me you have to stay home. It's those kinds of things that, you know, when you're not careful with trying to reprogram yourself in a, now a marriage relationship so you don't repeat patterns that you've learned at home and try to replay these scenarios with your own spouse. Yeah, that's so yeah. good. Proverbs 15 says, a soft answer turns away wrath. 
A harsh answer, a harsh word that stirs up anger. Like, just read the Proverbs, guys. Just The scripture has so much to say about it. And it's like a lot of truth tucked into one simple statement that a soft answer, you, just by the way you answer, can elevate, escalate, or de-escalate a situation. Here's what another verse says, Psalm 141. Set a guard over your mouth. Keep watch over the door of your lips. Like, like God put that two-ounce slab of muscle behind those ivory bars called teeth for a reason. We have to be careful of what we say. I was a kid's pastor, um, it, with how we started in ministry, and it was so fun because you could, you could use all types of illustrations. Did you do puppets? Uh, matter of fact, I did the yeah. puppets all by myself. Yeah, that's impressive. This is before we built a team. Remember the Velcro? Yes. yes. Well, I didn't have a lot of resource at our church. God bless this church. I was, it was the Sean show. So it would be me by myself, zero other volunteers, and I would flip a table over on the side and do both puppets. And, and we had some bad kids, you know, just a hundred kids on metal chairs, on concrete, just, ur, 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 yelling at me like, why your puppet only got one eye? I can see your hand. I'm like, y'all are going to hell anyway. Just shut up. Frustrated kids, Pastor. No, your kids. Your kids are not going to hell. Page Let me clarify Compliments. That. You didn't actually. Yeah. And their parents come. Communication, pick, baby. Parents pick the kid up. Your kid was an angel today. Yeah. See you next Sunday. All right. Here's one illustration I use, and this was passed down from my mom. Uh, we played a game with these two kids, and I said, all right, here's two tubes of toothpaste. Each of you have one on the count of three. Let's see who can get all the toothpaste out of the tube. Ready, go. And it was probably 20 seconds, and they got all the toothpaste out of the tube. And one, the kid who, who got all the toothpaste out first felt so excited. And I said, all right, now put it all back in. And they all looked at me about the same way you're looking at me. And then I turned into a sermon illustration and said, that's your words. It's easy to come out. You cannot put it back in. We have a process that we've, we've had a, a process since we um, set our vows 18 years ago. Uh, don't always apply it, but it's always in the forefront of our minds is think twice, speak once. Mm -hmm. And one of our fathers in the faith taught us about that because of that. Because what you say, Job 22, 28, talks about saying things and it's establishing good or bad things. And so think twice, speak once is uh, been a motto of ours. We have to, I was telling my 13 year old yesterday, he was just talking, talking, talking about one of his siblings. And I said, hey, 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 watch your words. Think twice, speak once. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. So he kind of, he kind of, he started like, what is it called? Shorthand? What is it called? When you cryptic say things, what is it called? He glad. He glad. He was trying that. I was like, that's <laughs> shortening the words. It doesn't mean you're saying less. <laughs> I, I do think one thing, though, aside from the pig Latin, um, <laughs> that was really important about what you just shared there was something that I think we so often don't think about is that we have ways that we have been patterned to communicate in life. Yeah. And we bring those patterns sure. that we have into all of our relationships. And sometimes we don't recognize it until we do that Mack truck moment where you smack into the relationships that you are oh, yeah committed to, and you have that moment to recognize, well, I want to stay committed to this relationship, or I just want to move on. Yeah. And if we're talking about friendships, that's a pivotal moment. If we're talking about dating relationships, it's pivotal. But when we're talking about marriage, it's a, it's a game changer for life, because you can do one of two things, and you can either find the solution together and allow Jesus to heal some things maybe that have been there that, that Pastor Diana spoke about, or you can continue doing what you're doing and be right. But there is a solution that will bring a healthy relationship and another one that will only bring more pain. So shifting gears, second question, let's talk about those who maybe aren't married yet. What's some, uh, what's some valuable encouragement you guys could give to someone uh, maybe in preparation uh, for good communication? <clears throat> Several things. One, don't marry a Christian. Wow. That's, I don't know if that's... Listen, right. hold on. There's a pause. Strategic okay. pause. Marry a godly person. Okay, good. Because being a Christian like, is free. <laughs> being godly takes work. That's good. Did y'all get that? Let's say it one more time. I got thrown off my, my facial yeah, expression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Because 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 sometimes you can first it, maybe you're new to, to the Lord, new to church, and um, you've walked away from a lot of toxic, toxicity, and then you find somebody else who's brand new, and you're like, oh my God, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, this is amazing, but you haven't worked through your issues yet, so you get together and then end up just doing the same stuff you came out of. Just be careful. Like, I don't know what your view of, of online dating is, but the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, eHarmony guy, he has a brilliant statement. He says this, he says this. Get yourself healthy before you get yourself married. Right. Because what happens is oftentimes we think, well, I'm, marriage is 50-50. No, it's, it's 100 and 100. Yes, sir. 50 plus 50 is 50. Last time I checked, 50 is a fail on any test. Like, you become a whole man in Christ by yourself with the Lord, and then God may open up the door to a whole woman. Because if you're half a man, you're going to attract half a woman. If you're half a woman, you will attract half a man. And then, and then you'll wonder why. We, we attract who we are. So that's a couple things I would say right off the bat. I wonder if FarmersOnly.com What's that? has that type of Farmers only. wisdom as well. Okay. Diana. I think when it comes to communication, the best place to practice is with your circle of friends. Oh, that's good. Um, I, I think the best way to kind of tackle communication is with your, your guy crew, your girl crew, and whoever that crew is. It, it's important. If you are with a bunch of ragers, you're going to become a rager. Um, if you're with a bunch of um, uh, people or your, your crew is like silent, constantly not talking, <laughs> and you're constantly controlling the, the scenario, then um, it, it's not adding value to you. And so th- no one can call you to the mat when, when you say things out of pocket or, you know, it, it's colored in a different way. And you need, you know, kind of like a soundboard to test you and that will tell you the truth about how you're communicating and some of the subliminal messages that you're giving off that you're not quite aware. Mm. So as a woman, um, there are things that maybe um, that you're not aware of that it gives... Um, a sense of that you're saying a lot with the very few words that you're, that you're putting out. And you're not meaning to say those things. So you could get yourself into trouble with, um, you know, political statements to conversations about other people. And it says a lot about you. And so we want to save you. We want to be your girl gang. You, we want to be your guy crew to make sure that we're there for you, that we're your wingman. But at the same time, we want to represent you well, and we want you to represent us well. <laughs> Amen. I had to learn communication and we, most of the issues in our marriage have been me, but the counselor helped me. Other people spoke to me. We all see that. If you, <laughs> yeah, she's lovely. We if all you, see it. If you don't have, some, listen, this. if you don't have somebody in your life that can call you to the mat, you're in trouble. It's the truth. That's why small groups are so vitally important to the church. And that's why as we serve together, it's so vitally important to your growth. And um, Ephesians 5 talks about husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Like that's, that's pretty big. Jesus gave his life for us, sacrificed unconditional love for us. And Jesus like, I want you to love your spouse that way, your wife that way. Wives respect your husbands. Now the Bible says we're to submit to each other. All right. Don't use scripture out of context and act like it's only the women's job to submit to the man. That's not contextually accurate. But the very end of this big, long passage that we primarily use for husband's wife The very last phrase, Paul says, I'm talking about Jesus in the church. Like I'm using this relationship to help you understand this relationship. That love and respect. And so we all need love and respect. But primarily, guys need to be respected. That's why God didn't say, hey, love your husbands. Women will out love you every single time. But, but loving your husbands. What I wasn't doing was I wasn't loving her the way she needed to be loved. I was coaching a couple one time, and you'll get this right away, where she she was screaming, he doesn't love me. And his response was, I put food on the table, don't I? Yeah, I could hear your eyes rolling. (laughs) I put grocery, I put a roof over your head, don't I? And I I backed up. I was like, this is about to get Jerry Springer real quick. (laughs) But you understand, to 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 his defense, he was trying to love her in a way that he felt she wanted love, it just wasn't the way she really felt love. 
So she's dying over here saying, I don't feel loved. Most of the problems with communication, it's like the cell phone towers are down. And all, our gift is just to help get the cell phone towers back up. Let's just, let's just get talking again. So what are the five love languages? You can get a couple books. One is called Love and Respect. Love and it's respect. a great book. Another one's called The Five Love Languages. And that's a great book because it talks about we all feel love differently. There's, there's, different lo there's words, there's gifts, there's touch and affection, acts of service, and there's quality time. Um, so many of you have that. And it's not wrong. It's just different, all right? My wife has all five. She, want, she just she needs wins. it all. Yay! <laughs> But real quick, to the love language, we actually have a couple um, that's at our Katy Cinco campus. Years ago, um, we, we've known them for a long time, and they'd be driving along, and uh, she'd reach over, no, it was the opposite. He'd reach over and rub her neck, and she'd be like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. And he's like, what do you mean? And then she'd rub his neck, and he'd be like, all right, okay. And they discovered their love language. She's not a big physical touch versus I think most guys are. And so looking at the five love languages, when they figured out how she loves, yep. gives love, receives loves, and vice versa, it cleared up a lot of their communication issues. It's like the story of the couple who gets married and uh, a year in, they're very frustrated because he grew up in a home where the love language was words of affirmation and she grew up in a home where the love language was gifts. And so for the first year, he's throwing words of affirmation at her. I love you. You're the best wife in the whole wide world. Oh my God, I'm so blessed to have you. And a year in, she's like, uh, enough with the words. Can we see some product rolling here? Like, <laughs> again, not wrong, yeah. just different. Go on a mission to study your spouse. What do they need? What do they need? Not what you want. What do they need? And it's this cycle that Love and Respects talks about. When, when you unconditionally love your wife, she will unconditionally respect you. And when there's unconditional respect, then there's unconditional love. And it's a great cycle. But without that, many people are fighting to be right and fighting to be heard. And, and it's a crazy cycle that many people are on. And I also love, we talk about this a lot with love languages, and I want you to share about this. With love languages, um, when you're single, you got to figure out the way you receive and the way you give love. But there's also seasons where that changes a little bit. Yeah. Um, for, for sure, like when we were first married, before we had baby number one, two, three, and four, that, that changes. Quality, of t quality time ended up becoming more of a priority than maybe a gift or affirmation because we ended up almost two passing ships in the night. But real quick, speak to the single side of it, but then also maybe how that changes in seasons. Well, the benefit of this conversation, aside from all of the benefits, is that, as you just mentioned, it's really important that we understand our own love language, but it's especially important that we understand the love language of the person that we're in relationship with. Because what Pastor Daniel is talking about is that as we grow and as life changes, as children come, as we walk through different seasons, the way in which we receive love can change as well. And if we, if we just lock in, okay, your love language is quality time. I'm only ever going to give you quality time time. And I never, ever, ever give another moment to communicate and to listen and to pay attention to maybe there's been a shift. Maybe time has changed things. Maybe you receive love a little differently. And if on my side, if I'm trying to do everything that you in the past appreciated, and now I'm feeling some pushback, it's going to hurt my heart because I'm trying to love you. But if you didn't pause to communicate and you didn't pause to listen and see where the person you're in relationship with is right now, then you might find yourself in another trap that says, you don't love me, you don't respect me, yeah. but you just don't know me today. Right. You're still remembering who I was 10 years ago, but come with me in relationship. You gotta grow in relationship. Yeah, so um, I'm sorry to No, no, oh, go. I was just gonna say my yeah. love language is still shoes. It's yeah. never changed. I like that. It's the sixth love language. Keep going. Continue. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> 
So um, when we first started off, I was a big gift girl. Um, that's how I was um, trained to be um, loved with gifts, like the Barbie dolls as a little kid, awesome. Barbie dolls in a marriage, not so. Okay, so um, when we got married, he was a lot of um, words of affirmation, um, affection, but that wasn't my love language. And so I got a little frustrated. So. I turned around and tried to express to him my love language, so he felt my love, but he was getting frustrated because that wasn't how he was um, taught and trained to be loved. So now years have gone by. We're, um, I think, 24 years, right? 24 years. Yeah, 24 come years. Come on, 24. That's, yes. Come on, that's yeah. amazing. Four kids. So we're veterans now. Uh, so his, now I, I'm, I'm married well married for 18. Yes. It's good to be honest. So now he receives um, affection um, in, a, in a different way or love or, or my express devotion to him. But for me, now I'm, I'm approaching 50, affection and love and, and um, my love tank needs to be filled in different ways. So um, now it's the adventure. Now it's going on road trips. Now it's, it, I still love gifts. I still love a Tiffany box. Hello, everybody. <laughs> But I love the fact that he loves being spontaneous with me. And those will shift. So my, the base to what I'm saying, like the, the bottom line is this, is that you as a man, you as a woman, you will change. And that's the wonderful thing about the human experience. I love it when people evolve, they change, they grow, they flex, they learn new things. And then you get to express that journey with your partner in crime, which is your spouse. And they get to explore a whole new world about you. And you get to teach them um, and, and take them on the journey with you. So if it's cars, my husband is all about cars. Fast cars, it's awesome. Will I drive in one? Probably not so much. But I will watch him from the stands as he goes, you know, at whatever speed his heart desires. But for, for him, he loves it when I enjoy an opera. I love operas. I love... And you're a brilliant opera singer. Oh, you're very kind. We might pull that out at the 1230 if y'all show up. Oh, my out. gosh. <laughs> but I, that's... He loves that part of, about me. And he'll go to a show and not understand the foreign language that it's being sung in. I think they're just speaking okay. in tongues, and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual. But uh, what I'm trying to express to you is that don't... Don't um, stop yourself from growing. Don't stop yourself from studying your partner, studying mm. your husband, studying your wife, studying your fiance, uh, because they won't be the same. Yeah. I promise you. And let's get real practical, all right? We have a few minutes left. Let's get real practical. Husbands, wives, get a phone out, get something to take, take notes with, and write down three things that you need from your spouse, all right? Write this down. Three things that you need. Don't do a sentence. Don't do a paragraph. Just like one thing. I need more of this from you. I need more quality time. I need uh, more intimacy. I need more a listening ear. Write those down. And then what you're going to do at some time today over lunch or dinner is you're going to exchange the notes. And here's how I'll help people. I don't know if anybody has it. It doesn't look like you're writing it down. Are you guys writing it down? <laughs> if anybody... Is there a couple here that's a married couple that you have, you've written it down, you have at least one or two on your list? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, okay. Somebody Would you be okay sharing the, the first one on your list? Yes. Quality time. Quality time. Quality time. I, I'm going to stand up here. Is that okay? And, and Follow me. two other campuses too. Follow me, camera. So they're probably yelling camera theirs people. out as well. <laughs> okay, to you, what is quality time? When there's no screen, all right? So this is, this is where it starts getting practical. Because she could say, you never talk to me. And he's like, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> she says, with no screen, what else? Um, preferably food. Preferably food. Hey, that's, that's some good conversation right there. Could I also probably add, this is probably in your heart, for him to look at you eye to eye. Because women need FaceTime, guys need shoulder time. You know that, right? Love and respect. And all my four daughters, my wife, have all grabbed my face at some point and my mom and said, look at me. Like, guys, listen with your eyes. 
Okay, don't be like, I'm, I can hear, I'm multitasking. They hate that stuff. I'm multitasking. But just that, just that, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the middleman. I'm just trying to help you understand where she's coming from because this is communication. It's not just, I want this. It's like, hey, give a clue. Blue's clues, blue's clues. Give a clue of how and what specifically that you need. And now it's very easy for you. Does that make sense? I just wanted to show you that. Now, do that for the rest of the day with the three things on your list, and you can go back and forth, but, but say, this is what I need, and here's what that looks like. That's right. It's love, it's respect, but it's, it's a very practical way. Many times, the light bulb will come on, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that this is what you meant by that. And give clues, like my wife, she would say, when I come home from work and I've had some heavy meetings, she's like, uh, I want to talk. Oh, how was your day? And I'm like, no, I don't want to say anything. I just want to eat something and watch a dumb show. But then she'll say, I need FaceTime. Do-do-do-do-do. Oh, she now gave me a clue. She wants me to listen. All right, give me a few minutes. Let me just, let me just get my stuff together and let me come. And now I understand she wants me to just look at her. She wants to talk for a little bit. Is this helpful? Is it helpful? That's right. Really good. It's how you define a relationship. You know, most, most, um, um, most of us, we look at marriage as a contract instead of a covenant. And our, our pastor, Pastor Chris Hodges, one day, he had a husband wife come in, and there was an affair on the lady's part, and it was over. But they were still trying to work it out. Well, he helped them, and, and at the very end, the lady said, thank you, but I think we're done shakes hands, walks out down the hallway, and then comes back and says, oh, pastor, quick question. I mean, thank you for what you tried to do for us. It didn't work, but thank you. Do you have anything for people who are struggling with drugs? Because my brother has been on drugs for a long time, in and out of prison. I mean, he's stolen from us. We keep giving him chance after chance after chance, and all this. It's just, you know, do you have anything for, for that? And, and Pastor Chris said, yeah, we do. We have small groups and a freedom group, and here's how we can help. And he said this, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is it that you're so committed to this relationship, but you see this one as disposable? You have had your brother steal from you, lie to you for years. And her answer she said, oh, that's easy. He's blood. And very quickly, you realize you have defined the relationship differently. Wow, that's good. We define marriage as a covenant, not a contract. It's a covenant before God, for better or for worse, till death do us part. And I would encourage you to get some counseling, get some help, get in a small group. But lastly, I'll say this. I played basketball. Not very well. And I was so good. I mean, would, would have went pro, but I was called into the ministry. Pro, pro community college. <laughs> it's fine. Keep going. Anybody who's ever played basketball, you know this to be true, all right? 100%. There's been a loose ball. And you go after that loose ball and you're grabbing it and you're swinging elbows and, and there's everybody else is grabbing it too. One time in the game, we're swinging. Another guy, he's grabbed the ball too. We're all swinging, swinging, trying to fight to get the ball. And then somebody on the sidelines yells out, same team. <laughs> you're on the same That's so funny. team. Yes. We're fighting, throwing elbows. Can I just be the guy on the sidelines of your marriage today with all the misunderstanding, with all of the hurt, with all the yelling and the arguments? Let, let us be the people on the sidelines screaming, same team. Don't fight to be right. Fight to understand. That's good. Come on. Let's give God praise. This is what I want to do. Um, can y'all pray? Just pray for families, pray for marriages, pray for individuals who are preparing right now maybe to uh, get engaged or maybe they're... Uh,
Maybe they're single and secure, or maybe it's, they're single and it's complicated. Can y'all just speak a blessing over relationships and pray over them? And then, uh, and then we're gonna give you an opportunity. The reason we, we gather weekly, the reason why our incredible dream team shows up at Katy and at Woodlands here at West Houston, Tanzania, and across literally the nation, what we do to set up and, and set up lights and sound and put chairs in place is because we want you to have an opportunity to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. We truly want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose and make a difference. And we really are better together. And I'm grateful for series like this because it's more than just a self-help moment. You can Google self-help. You, you can download an ebook or buy a book and figure out that. This is a set apart series to help us grow in relationship and also grow in relationship with Jesus. So can y'all pray? And then we're gonna also give that opportunity. So if you're across campuses, I want you to reach to your spouse, your fiance, your significant other, and just hold their hand. And we're gonna do this together. And just say with me, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for um, the relationship, the connections that you um, brought us into. Thank you for knitting hearts. Thank you for knitting minds. Thank you for binding us as one. And for those of us that are gonna to begin to cross the threshold, Lord, I pray just the wind in their sails of um, blessing, encouragement, growth, um, teachability, and a flexibility in their spirit as they grow to be one. Father, I pray for marriages. I pray for those who came in with angst in their hearts, frustration. Maybe they're on the brink of a divorce. Maybe there's papers already served at the dinner table, Lord God. And I'm asking, Lord, would you do it again? Would you breathe life again? Father, rescue hearts, rescue minds. Let them think of the children. Let them think of what they want to pour into the next generation. I pray that things and, and, and the walls would come down and hearts would be mended once again. Do it again, Lord Jesus. And Father, for those of, that just want to be better, I pray that you will give them the tools, the insight, and the wisdom from heaven that we're kingdom culture, that we're kingdom families. And Father, we're wanting to do the best to our ability to love our spouses, to love our husbands, to love our wives. And Father, and we will produce a family, build a family, build children's hearts to see and to know what the love of the father and the love of a mother looks like. Lord, we thank you, we honor you. We pray that your glory and your hand will rest upon this house and upon the marriages and the families in Hope City. Lord, we love you so much. In Jesus' strong name we pray and all God's people say amen. Come on. Can we give it up for Pastor Sean, Pastor Diana Nepstead? Come on, y'all are a gift. Thank you so much. And maybe you're here this weekend and we just said it a moment ago, but maybe you're here and you say the truth is Daniel, Jackie, the truth is we, we don't have things figured out because we're not leaning into the presence of God. We're not in relationship with Jesus. I'm gonna give you two opportunities today. The first one is you wanna know Jesus as your Lord and Savior for the very first time. Maybe you came in today, maybe somebody invited you, maybe you're watching online, and maybe there was moments that stood out today that got your attention, but the foundation of all of it is Jesus. We say this often here that the answer begins with and ends with Jesus. So we're gonna give you an opportunity for the first time to give your life to Jesus. I'm gonna to count to three. We don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because according to Romans 10, verse nine and 10, when we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved with every eye closed just for a moment. Here at West Houston, Katie, Woodlands, Tanzania, literally across all of our watch parties, maybe the second invitation. If you say, Daniel, Jackie, here's the truth. I got caught up in the prodigal life. I've been living reckless. My family, my personal life, my individual life, my marriage is struggling because I'm refusing to surrender to Jesus, but I wanna make things right today. I wanna rededicate my life today. I've been living reckless, but today's the day I wanna make everything right with him. So when I hit three, if you're the first invitation, I wanna give my life to Jesus for the first time. Or number two, I wanna rededicate my life. One, two, I want you to slip up your hand. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I see you, I see you, I see you over here. I see you in the back. 
Come on, I see you over here. I see you, my friend. Come on, Hope City. Can we give God praise for all the hands that just went up? I know they're going up at other locations as well. So here's what we're going to do with our entire team, everybody watching. If you're watching online, you can say yes to Jesus. Our team, our moderators will help you. In just a moment, we're going to give you a next step. So just remain seated for just a few moments. But let's pray this prayer together as family. Say, Jesus, it's me. Today, we're talking about relationships, and I want a relationship with you. This is not a religious moment. This is a relationship moment where I surrender everything, all my sins, all my struggles, all my issues, and I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, thank you for hanging on that cross for my life, even though I didn't deserve it. But then on the third day, you got up from the grave so that I could walk in freedom. From this moment on, I'm choosing to live for you. You're my Father. You're my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise today?